I am Dr. Nuzhat Parveen Khan, Associate Professor, Faculty of Law, Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. Today the topic of our discussion is Jury Matrix, the Science of Law. Uh, the learning objective of this particular subject, Jury Matrix is, Jury Matrix is the study of science of law. It is made up of two words, Juris, which means law, E matrix, which means eco matrix. Jury matrix is a step towards seeking new alternatives in the field of legal inquiry and is not to be treated as a science. Jury matrix involves a strictly, strictly empirical approach to the law and examines a wide range of scientific and legal topics that are interrelated. The term Jury matrix was coined by Lee Levinger in the year 1949, who introduced this word into legal vocabulary later on in the late 50s. And this word, jury matrix, signifies scientific investigation of legal problem. Uh, further, as the use of computers in law practice began to revolutionize the areas of legal research in the evidence analysis, data management, the jury ga matrix gained further momentum in legal researches. Uh, uh, in the recent years, an attempt to predict judicial behavior has also taken a mechanical term, for which the term jury matrix become more appropriate. The jury matrix uh, takes the form of different kind of investigations into legal phenomena by using symbolic logic, behavioral models and mechanical aids. The theme of jury matrix in the olden days was not to eliminate the reasons or philosophy from jurisprudence or to find out substitute for necessary values which are an intrinsic part of lawmaking. Further, uh, the jury matrix signifies the scientific investigation, especially by using electronic methodologies and by using symbolic logics. Uh, we as a law student know that law can develop only by continuously drawing new values and solutions from the life of the community and this is achieved partly by the development of new laws and partly by the standards and principles which are implied in particular branches of law. And we also know that it is a legislature which is interested with the work of making of the law and it is further the lawyers and the judges who are scientifically and intrinsically involved in the study of law. So, how can we say or how far the work or of a judge, task of a judge in developing the law can be described as scientific? What is the theory? The theory which they follow is theory of logical plentitude. What is this logical plentitude theory which the judges apply while they are developing a judgment? The logical plentitude theory means that the law is not a mere collection of detailed rules, but an organic body of principles with inherent scope of growth and flexibility to adapt to new circumstances. A rational system for the exercise of authority of human being. Further, the doctrine of logical plentitude is to be used in a way to make it a narrowing force because if a case is decided purely by logical deductions from the actual rules, then we will crush its growth. The growth of the law will be crushed if the logical plentitude theory is applied in a uh, strict sense. Further, leading works on jurisprudence, one of the work, Jury Matrix Symposium, contained an introduction to the new discipline of science of law and also a number of the types of works and experiments undertaken. 
despite uh, the diverse range of uh, potential mathematical applications to the law, uh, it has been concluded by various studies that the most perfect machine even will never be able to replace the creative efforts of responsibility of man in the decision on a public matter that is the legal regulation of social relations. Uh, the scientific development in the codification of law has also led to the danger of machine made justice. By allowing a proportion of legal inquiries to be conducted by machines rather than by individual judges may cause judges and lawyers to avoid the responsibility for their hard legal decisions, but to resort to ready made answers based on computers, which definitely is not a good sign. However, the vast range and huge accumulation of material relevant to the legal process seem to demand some kind of uh, legal, uh, some kind of uh, mechanical and mathematical approach if only towards information storages and retrieval, which means uh, just to sort out the material we can use mechanical tools, but with regard to reasoning the decision it is necessary that there should be some legal reasoning and legal reasoning is a process through which data is interpreted as high level concepts. Then further legal reasoning takes intensive factual interpretations and the drawing of conclusions through heuristic computations. Further it is thought that artificial intelligence tools, some form of computational models which are appearing nowadays as legal expert system, shortly we can call them LEX. These LEX can be devised for the analysis of legal problems within defined domain where possible to provide basic legal advice derived from the reasoning processes. Legal expert system is a relatively young industry and it is a very authoritative definition of this product. It is worth noting that it is with every other kind of expert system uh, which differs from legal information retrieval system in the is the answer given by the LEX. But the answer given by the LEX depends and who is asking the questions and they are most of the time very made up answers. Following are the desirable elements of the LEX, they includes high performance problem solvers, they are built with the assistance of human experts, uh, LEX operates in a specific problem areas, LEX also help in argumenting rather than supplementing humans. Uh, they are not intended for use by layman. That means those who are experts in the legal skills can use these legal expert systems and the LEX are transparent also because they explain the lines of reasoning. They are flexible also. Uh, generally LEX consists of or composed of three component. It has one uh, uh, number one it is a legal knowledge base, number two there should, is a, there should be an inference engine being its reasoning mechanism, thirdly it should be having a user interface. The potential contributor of LEX to the general public takes the form of following benefits. The benefits are there though it is machine made logic, but it has some benefits and the benefits includes uh, it elevates the workload of lawyers that is why it enhances the quality of their professional work. It offers public ready access to simple and legal advice at all the times. Uh, it also offers the prospect of a much lower rate of legal service knowledge. In law data is being represented in na natural language which represent the facts and legal case that are human events which may lead to a disputes. One of the objective of legal argument is to interpret analyze the fact of the case and to try to fit the case into the defined rules of law. Now the complexity of modern statutory provision with collateral amendments statutory instruments seems to require more than traditional methods to enshrine and expound their meaning 
and under those circumstances the jury matrix with the help of these machinic tools becomes a helpful instrument. Uh, the symbolic logic could perhaps provide useful tool to this end. Computers will help in eliminating arithmetical errors and data transportation oversights. This through which uh, the, the, this, this may further leads to uh, oversight mistakes can be avoided which may further uh, bring the information which can be relied by the judges and even by the lawyers while they are dealing with the cases. Computers further ensures uniformity and uh, application of the law becomes simpler. They can judges and lawyers with the help of machinic tools can also easily avoid the responsibility of hard legal decisions by resorting to a ready-made answer based on the questions. In drawing distinction between a scientific method and philosophic method, the ultimate test of any approach should be in its ability to advance knowledge which can be utilized in solving manifold human problems as the method, these methods are only means to an end. In this respect, no matter how jury matrix is placed, whether within or outside the boundaries of jurisprudence, the primary concern is its ability to help in understanding and investigation of legal problems. Uh, now we will discuss the next issue which is jury matrix in judicial research. Jury matrix substantially involves the use of quantitative methods in judicial research. Quantitative methods are essentially aids in descriptions. They help to bring out in details the regularities in the data which are which the researcher has collected. Further they are suited to the handling of large quantities of data and wide range of variables. The bulk of the data and the complexity of the valuables involved may make it extremely difficult to handle the data manually and in that circumstance the jury matrix and the computer aid becomes very helpful. With the help of computers it becomes uh, uh, easy and it becomes desirable uh, to use computers because it has opened up unprecedented opportunities to look beyond the fragmented terms of unconnected knowledge. Uh, quantitative methods are the ways of summarizing the features and relationship in data. Further, the statistical measures based on the theory of probability go beyond the mere quantitative data and use devices to bring out the association between variables emerging out of data. Then jury matrix though is not a substitute for basic elements of judicial reasoning. However, it ha is helping to put a series of questions that are capable of investigation. It seeks not sudden relationship or universal laws, but the slow accretion of tested information. Uh, as we have seen in the previous text that uh, though the uh, judicial attitude and judicial motives are very important in any decision making and in any judicial day process, but computers are getting helpful and uh, all these mechanical tools are becoming aids to help the judicial process. But despite that jury matrix is encountering certain problems which can be encountered with the while the use of computers is made. Sometimes it, uh, you know we can divide these uh, approaches into group approach and computer prediction. Now it is difficult to predict the behavior of individual but that of mass of people is easier. It is also difficult to obtain adequate information about the inner working of group. Also available information with the help of these machines can be misleading. When using scientific models which are simplified abstractions of fixed phenomena, the corrections that have to be made are also fixed. That means if errors are fixed, the corrections are also fixed. 
where however the phenomena fluctuates as with human beings. The social phenomena generally are fluctuating and it is impossible to know what corrections need to be made and for what purpose these models become useless. Further the computer predictions so far as there is a consistency in decision and attitude, the prediction of judicial opinions by computers become possible through fact studies. Fact studies means the acceptance of a fact by an appellate court rested on identifiable conditions surrounding the way in which it was presented to the trial court. If the accepted facts are combined in certain ways, the decision will go in one way. Then attitude studies, attitude is nowadays is capable of being scaled by means of a scalogram. A person who reacts positively to a weak stimulus will definitely react similarly to another weaker stimulus. If the line of cases can be made to scale in this way, a set of values can be shown to be shared by members of that code, thereby making the future behavior predictable. That means once a person attitude is one type of in one situation, uh, the chances are it is going on to be the similar or same in another situation. However, any attempt at prediction seems to fail because this is a very technical and typical type of situation the behavior will remain same because the personal element just cannot be eliminated from judicial decisions and everything depends on how facts are viewed and stated. The same set of facts can be stated in different combinations and at different levels of generality. No mechanical aid can predict such combination or labels as is likely to be chosen. Different ratios can be extracted from a decision depending on whether the later court wishes to see resemblance or differences. Then predictability of judicial decisions also depends upon the consistency of the judges, their attitude, their behavior, their values and people's attitude, people, judges are also people, people's attitude changes with age and experience. So con however, con computer predictions always remain static. Computer prediction can only work on the basis of reported decisions, the majority of which are essentially those of lower court and they are unreported. And the judges in their uh, uh, decision making at times refer to even those unreported judgments also. A computer analysis indicating a judge's decision can distract the judges from the judicial function because the judicial functions uh, includes many other type of uh, uh, factors which we will study in the later part of this lecture. Uh, now if we talk of the use of jury matrix in the Indian legal system, first of all let us understand the judiciary, Indian judiciary. We have three wing, important wings of the governance and judiciary is one of the these three wings of the state. The structure of the judiciary in our country is pyramidical in nature and the Supreme Court of India is the highest judicial forum and final court of appeal. Article 137 of the Supreme Court uh, of the constitution uh, gives the power to the Supreme Court to review its own judgments. Further article 129 uh, gives power to punish anyone for the contempt of court of India, uh, any court of India including the Supreme Court. Uh, then uh, now let us talk about the judicial behavior of the judges of the Supreme Court of India and then the use of jury matrix. The judges philosophy which is reflected in the judicial pronouncement. Just uh, Benjamin Cardozo in his classical work nature of judicial process mentioned various factors which influence judicial functioning and the behavior is one of them. Uh, it is always a social and political background of the judges which is relevant in explain in explaining the decision making behavior. There are dynamics theories of judicial process. The picture of the judges as a policy oriented decision maker who drives his premises both from within and outside the courtroom and whose functions are exceeding the mechanical work by applying settled rules of law to clear fact situation. Theory does not specify the precise nature of the relationship between judges background, 
his experience and his judicial work which definitely makes an important part while a judge gives a decision. The judicial decision cannot be explained solely in terms of social background itself. Uh, there is a philosophy and psychology of the judges which is more helpful by, while a judge uh, pronounces or gives a judgment. The constitutional law in fact changes according to the philosophical current in the minds of the judges. The social views and legal philosophy of the judge are often powerful forces both in shaping of the law and administration of the judiciary. The subjectivity of an individual judge plays the most important role in the deciding of cases because the inherent morality which is embedded in a judge's subconscious mind gives the law the dynamic character. Every judge has his or her own, his or her own perception of what the law is and the law functions and that is what is undertaken to be implemented. Now psychological motives and influences are not othered when one assumes the role of a judge. That is the case with other opinion of the individuals. The judicial opinion represented in a measure of personal impulse of the judge in relation to the situation before him. And these impulses are determined by judges lifelong series of previous experience. That means uh, somehow the background and whatever the judge, judge have percept, be, perceived before being the judge of the Supreme Court or the high courts is definitely going on to reflect while the judge is giving a judgment. Then human factors and the environment is definitely an important aspect in the judicial decisions. The personality of a judge plays an important part in the process of their adjudication on particular cases and has to be taken into account as an innumerable part of the case. As a child, the judge who was born into a human community that has already experienced and classified an almost endless number of situations and the behaviors which are appropriate to each situation. The guidelines derived from all this experience and all these situations are imparted to the child as he develops and matures. When as an adult, the judge is faced with a situation, the pre-conscious and the subconscious screening and the typing of the situation and rules of behavior occur. And this affects the person's particular personality and behavior. Because judges are also men from diversified backgrounds, while they are interpreting the constitution, they are inferring out of their experience and their ideal of the social order. Uh, we have, uh, uh, I think being the law students, we have noticed various judgments, various judges, their behaviors, their judgments and their powerfulness, their landmarkness, such as all of us uh, talk of Justice Krishna here. Justice Bhagwati, their philosophies, their parameters of creating with regard to PILs, the judgment with regard to judicial independence were very famous just because they have given the interpretation in such a way that it, it, it become an important and integral part of our constitutional system. Similarly, Justice Kuldeep Singh and Justice Verma are also remembered. Justice Verma very famous for giving sexual harassment guidelines which shows his sensitivity towards the women and the weaker sections of the society. Justice Khanna gave ADM Jabalpur judgment despite he have to uh, leave his uh, race for the Chief Justice post but he, he gave a very big and long judgment, a human judgment in ADM Jabalpur case. Markande Karju for his different approach, Gyan Sudha Mishra giving a judgment in Aruna Shonbak which is about passive euthanasia, just as uh, K. S. Radha Krishnan, Indra Sharma case about living relationship where he stated that living relationship is not a sin though it may not be socially acceptable. There are we also have Justice Ganguly and some other judges whose behavior have become uh, subject matter of discussion due to some bad reasons also. The judge's participation in the decision making process gets subjected 
to both the formal and informal rules and practices adopted in the bench assignment activity which is a complex phenomenon. The social attitude and values uh, preferences of judges are reflected in the opinions they write and the vote they cast for or against a particular judgment. One of the prerequisite for studying such differences among the judges is that the individualistic behavior of each judge must reveal certain recurrent pattern, uniformities and consistencies over a period of time. Only if the regularities are observable, the valuables sufficient to explain the observed regularities can be identified. Supreme Court of India and its judges have limited success in it because of certain reasons. Uh, one of the reason is the short tenure of the judges which leads to rapid turnover in the court making it just difficult to observe their respective behavior over a reasonable period of time. However, we see the examples of uh, uh, recent examples of minority and majority judgment that reflects the behavior and the background of the judges. The frequent use of a small panels which consist of two or three judges to dispose of bulk of the work of the court ruling out any possibility of all or majority of the judgment to partic participate jointly and simultaneously on the decision making panels. Number three, the quantum and character of over dissent in the court has been such that it does not easily lend itself to behavioral analytical tools. Uh, and now finally, to conclude this lecture, we can say that in order to analyze judgments, you need some insight into the decision making process of a judge. Since very little has been written by the judges themselves about the practicalities of the judgeship in modern times, there arise today an emphasis on the logic of discovery and the drawing of an analogy between the task of the judge and that of a natural scientist. Jury metrics, the application of modern logic and computer technique to legal problems may be useful in the analysis of facts, in the identification of ambiguities, in the syntax and perhaps in the prediction and formulation of judicial decisions. Jury metrics does not offer any social answers. It is concerned with only investigating the structure and dimensions of all exper experience that of relevant to such law. Jury metrics further have two dimensions, information technology and computer advanced technology and second part mental, physical and social background of the judges and its impact on him while deciding the te cases. Uh, so finally, we can say until a time technology reaches such a high where artificial intelligence would be able to analyze with certainty the mechanism by which a judge decides a case an inquiry into the subjectivity of the judge's discretion. It would rest with the subjective analysis of follow humans who are subconsciously governed by their sets of social and mental background. The jury metrics will be a true science only then.